Hey guys and welcome back to the second video in my guided tour of cooking. In the last video we took care of the setup and cooking for XP and in this video we're gonna turn to cooking for profit. But how do you actually find profitable recipes? When staring into the depths of the cooking market it can feel quite overwhelming. Almost like a vast uncharted ocean with hundreds of potential recipes floating like islands in the sea waiting to be discovered by you. In this video we'll explore the cooking ocean and map out which of these islands are worth a visit. For that we'll be using the best in slot lifescale calculator Videolytics created by Warflash. We're gonna be looking at three ways to make money with cooking, Imperials, cooking for byproducts and market cooking. During the video I'll be answering three questions that I see commonly asked when it comes to cooking. When should I stop turning in byproducts for CP? Is it worth to cook my own meals for Imperials? And how much mastery do I need to make money with cooking? Like in the first video, all the resources I mentioned can be found in the video description. Okay, let's start our expedition. First step is cooking for byproducts. See this pile of silver? This is how much money we can make just from byproducts in one hour of semi AFK cooking. Anyone can do it, it's super simple, let me show you how. Every time you finish a craft, there's a chance to drop a byproduct called Witch's Delicacy. You can turn them in for beer, milk or contribution points. Milk and CP are the go-to options. We'll look at milk now and come back to CP later. Let's say we have 1k cooking mastery. In an hour of cooking we can get about 300 byproducts. We can turn them into an NPC in Olvia and get 3.6k milk out of it. But it doesn't stop there. Milk is way too valuable to sell, so to liquidate our pile of milk we process it into cheese. Alternatively, you could also directly use the milk in cooking or process it into cream or butter, but cheese is the simplest one, so we'll go with that. Each milk turns into 2.5 cheese on average, which gives us 9k cheese. We can liquidate the cheese either by selling it to the market or by using it in cooking. If we sell the cheese at around 8k a piece, we get a total of 60 million silver after taxes. And that's how much we can make in an hour of AFK cooking and a bit of processing at 1k cooking mastery. And you'll make more or less than that depending on your mastery. So which recipe should we choose to get byproducts the easiest way? The byproduct drop rate is the same for all dishes, so we'll go with a really cheap one like vinegar. Now if we don't want to calculate the profit by hand like a savage, we can use videolytics. In the settings we enter our cooking mastery and that we turn the byproducts into cheese. On the recipe page for vinegar I'll enter the number of crafts so that it shows an hour of cooking at our mastery. As you can see we make 60 ml just from byproducts. You'll also notice that without the cheese the recipe is a slight loss. But once we sell the cheese we're making pretty good AFK money. And even if we just let the vinegar pile up in our storage, just the byproducts alone are solid income. But if you have the option, I would definitely recommend selling the vinegar to the market or use it in further cooking. Unless you want to end up with millions of vinegar, like my guildy Daco, who's called Cooking in Game and is going for 100 million vinegar. Also, shout out to Chibi for achieving the 502 CP meme dream. To avoid accidentally stockpiling 100 million vinegar, we can take it and turn it into pickled vegetables. What makes vinegar and pickled vegetables so good for cooking for byproducts? They are cheap to craft, use easily available materials like vendor and note materials and sell fast on the market. Are there more recipes like this? Sure, here's a list of them. So as you can see we can make about 50 ml an hour cooking pickled vegetables of similar recipes of course including the byproducts. And we could craft them all day every day because we never run out of materials and can sell them as fast as we cook them. So what does that actually mean for our cooking? It means that no matter what recipe we cook, we'll always be aiming to make at least 50 ml an hour with that recipe. Because if a recipe is less than 50 ml an hour, we could have just cooked pickled vegetables and made more money. And with that we could say the value of our cook time is 50 ml an hour. Knowing the value of our cook time is really important for using our time efficiently. Because when most people check cooking profits, they will only see if the recipe's profit is above zero. But what we'll do instead is check if the profit matches at least the value of our cook time. In that example we are making sure any recipe gets us at least 50 ml an hour. So there can be recipes that are profitable, meaning profit above zero, but not worth our time because the profit is lower than the value of our cook time. And as you can see the value of your cook time might be different from someone else's because they have different mastery and different recipes available to them. 
And to summarize, the value of our cook time is the highest profit per hour we can consistently make. And the easiest way to find that value is through a recipe that we could craft all day every day. Pickled vegetables is such a recipe, but many other recipes like vinegar or essence of liquor from this list work just as well. And knowing the value of our cook time helps us find worthwhile recipes as we'll see later in this video. Milk is not the only way we can get value out of the byproducts, we can also turn them in for CP. Having more CP can get us more storage space, worker nodes, and increase the daily quota for imperial boxes. Turning in byproducts for CP is also a great way to level cooking on alts for life fame. So which one should we go for, milk or CP? If your CP isn't quite at 502 yet like Chibis, you wanna turn in the byproducts for CP. But of course you should consider stopping way earlier. Which brings me to the first question, when should I stop turning in byproducts for CP? Here we see the CP calculator on Videolytics. It shows a nice graph of how many byproducts we need per CP. And the more CP we already have, the more byproducts we need, and that progression is staggered with multiple soft caps. Past a certain point, one CP becomes so expensive that it's better to start turning in the byproducts for milk. Where this bracket is shifts over time as PA increases the CP soft caps, but currently 350 and 400 CP are good stopping points and you can use the calculator to check how many hours of cooking it takes to get to that point. Another way to make money is imperial cooking. We simply box up dishes and sweet talk the NPC into giving us way too much money for the boxes. Per day we can make anywhere from 45 to 120 mil for 5 minutes of work just by buying and boxing dishes, and more if we put in the extra time to cook the dishes ourselves. Here we see the Imperial Cooking Overview on Videolytics. It shows the different boxes and the money you can make from buy boxing and cooking the dishes yourself, and you can sort the list by profit per box. If you're buying, keep an eye on the in stock column because not all dishes are actually on the market. You can enter your mastery and then simply go down the list and pick the first dish that is available on the market. For example, with 1k mastery we could make 392k profit per guru box when buying other liter meals. If you're cooking the dishes yourself, finding a suitable dish to make can be a bit more challenging. Luckily, below Guru it's pretty simple, it's pickled vegetables all the way. Pickled vegetables goes into a professional box that outperforms almost all boxes up until master while having no bottleneck at all. Now there are a few master boxes that can be more profitable, but they all come with at least one bottleneck. The most viable ones are suet tea and milk tea and they come with a milk bottleneck attached. If you have the milk, you can make the master boxes, but you'll want to supplement with pickled vegetables because master boxes aren't sustainable on a daily basis. Alright, now that we've sorted out the master boxes and below, let's move on to guru boxes. There's a whopping 17 guru boxes to pick from, but which one should you choose? For that, let's head over to the detailed recipe view of the guru box. Here we can select a meal in the top right corner, punch in the number of boxes and Videolytics tells us the materials needed for those boxes. And don't forget to click the Use Rare Pack button if you also box the special meals. Special meals count as three regular meals for packing, so we definitely want to use them as well. Let's say we want to know the materials needed for one day of Valencia meal guru boxes. With 350 CP that would be 175 boxes, which we'll enter as the craft quantity. You'll also want to edit the materials used in the recipe tree on the right. Materials that are sold out on the market are indicated in red on the left. Those will most likely be the bottlenecks that you'll have to worry about. Okay, but how do you actually decide on a meal? I propose a checklist of 5 items. We'll go down the checklist with Valencia meal boxes as an example. First, the profit of the box. Valencia meals yield some of the best imperial profit you can get. Second, how easy it is to collect the main material. That's lion, snake and scorpion meat, which we have to gather at Ancaro Coast and Chiro Ruins. Third, bottlenecks, so materials that are not available on the market. Technically, milk is a bottleneck for butter, but I don't consider it one because you can buy butter off the market at any time if you run out of milk. Cooking XP, highest in the game. And fifth, other materials, for example farming products. For Valencia meals, we only need hot pepper, so that's easy. We can even use magical seeds for maximum convenience. If you're not hyped about gathering lions and scorpy boys and like to hunt for meat instead, you could go for other liter meals. Let's go down the checklist again for those. Profit, similar to Valencia meals, which we said was good. Materials, hunting for meat and blood is easy as hell. 
The annoying part is gathering bracken down an other liter. Bottlenecks, about 200 milk a day for the oatmeal. You can easily manage that just with cooking byproducts. EXP, highest in the game together with Valencia meals. And other materials, delosia, onion and garlic from farming. Farming for three different crops is tedious, but on the bright side you can farm the magical versions for all three. And I would definitely try to rotate the three crops on your farms to make your life easier rather than doing all of them at once. There's one other material I want to mention, purified water. It's perma sold out on the market and you can buy it from the general goods vendor at Sandcrane Bazaar. So you could go down the checklist for every meal and would probably come to the conclusion that three meals stand out above the others. Balanus, Valencia and Odalita meals. They have established as the meta boxes because they perform decently well for all of the checklist items. Here's a small summary for them. You can of course go for a different meal, but they often struggle with one or more of the checklist items. For example, Medaya, Serendia and Calfian meals come with a hefty milk or egg requirement that you can't easily circumvent like in Valencia meals. Karma and Elton meals require gathering spread out materials like rainbow button mushrooms and translucent ice. Now let's talk about packing and turning in the boxes. It's pretty straightforward, but there are a few things that you can do to make your life easier. First of all, you can pack 10 boxes at once if you have completed a one-time quest. Also, you can use the processing costume to pack from storage and stack weight buffs like Verdure Draft and equip Trader's Clothes. But enough packing, let's turn in our boxes. And this is where you want to equip your Mastery Clothes. Before they turn in, you can take a daily quest from Liana. The quest gives a utensil repair tool and some goodies. Alright, accept the quest, check your Mastery for having the Mastery Clothes equipped and hand in the boxes. Each box will give one Imperial Seal and a set amount of silver. If you're lucky, you'll also get a quest for a lightstone or artifact. You can turn in the Imperial Seals for different things, including eggs, milk, supreme cooking utensils or manas tools, which you can sell for silver. Value-wise, the options are all fairly equal once you consider their use value. Just pick whatever you need the most. Well, technically the best profit is the Essence for Kobe crystals, but good luck getting the Ancient Magic crystals needed for that. Now let's answer the second question from the beginning. Is it worth to cook my own meals from Imperials? There are essentially two ways you can go about Imperials. If you don't plan to do a lot of cooking past Guru, you can simply take the easy money from buy boxing and run. But if you see cooking as your main source of income, Guru boxes are a great source of profit and cooking XP. Well, they're definitely good XP. And depending on your mastery, they can also be good profit. Valencia and Odi meals more so than Balanos. So at lower mastery, you'll be making the meals mainly for XP rather than profit. But as your mastery gets higher, cooking your own imperials gets stupidly profitable. Now let's tackle the mighty beast, market cooking. I'm sure you've heard the horror stories about how market cooking is not doable at low mastery and you should just stay away. While some of that is true, I'll show what you can cook even at lower mastery and hopefully you'll get more realistic expectations of market cooking coming out of this. Let's start by facing the harsh truth about meal cooking and then work ourselves up from there mentally. Cooking mastery is vital to making worthwhile profit on meals. The extra perks we get from mastery will make or break the profit. And higher mastery also leads to more crafts per hour which amplifies the effect. Here I plotted the profit from cooking Balanus meals plus components and our beloved pickled vegetables from 0 to 1.4k mastery. You can see that the profit on pickled vegetables scales rather linearly, while the profit on Balanus meals grows exponentially. It takes a thousand mastery just to break even on the cost for the Balanus meals. But what's even more important is that cooking Balanus meals breaks even with cooking pickled vegetables, which we said was our baseline recipe only at 1.4k mastery. So if we only cared about profit, we'd be better off cooking pickled vegetables or similar recipes over Balanus meals unless we have really high mastery. Wait a second, Balanus meals looked pretty bad there. Meals weren't always this bad, right? What happened? Well, with the Lightstone update, anyone with the fundamentals of cooking set can cook with mastery clothes while still having 2 seconds cook time or less. Since they are cooking with higher mastery and can afford to list meals for cheaper, the price of meals starts going down. But what can we do when we don't quite have that much mastery yet? 
Let's check out which recipes are profitable. Here you can see the market cooking overview on Biolytics. It shows the profit per hour and daily volume for each recipe next to some other info like XP. You can also search by a material or dish and Biolytics will show you all recipes that you can cook with that item. The first thing you want to do is sort by daily volume. In general, the way to find profitable recipes is to find items that are in demand and then figure out why they are in demand. What immediately stands out here is that our known suspects from cooking imperials appear here as well. That's because imperials are what currently creates most of the demand for meals. In fact, if you look at the list of top selling dishes, it's dominated by Balanas and Valencia meals and their components. So that's it, the current cooking market can be boiled down to two meals and components. Welcome to the Valencia Archipelago, the coolest place in the cooking ocean where all the guru chefs hang out. Okay, but for real, Balanas and Valencia meals are the current meta for cooking. The good news is that you only need to worry about a handful of recipes when looking for profitable dishes to cook, and you can cook basically an infinite amount of them without crashing the market. The bad news is that most recipes in the game only have a niche existence and finding ways to make money with market cooking outside of the Valencia archipelago can feel quite unrewarding. Now let's see how to make money with market cooking. To compete with the high mastery cooks on the market we can do two things. First, we can cook dishes with bottleneck materials, like hamburgs, teff sandwich or milk tea. Bottlenecks are good for us because it means fewer people can cook the dish. That means less competition and lower mastery requirement. Some bottlenecks like milk are limited of course, others we can gather like lion, snake and scorpion meat for hamburgs and teff sandies. Second, we can gather the main ingredient of the dish. This works even on non-bottlenecked recipes because we get a tax cut on self-gathered materials which can make the dish profitable to cook. A common choice for that is red meat, which we can get very easily by hunting. Unfortunately, our selection of dishes with red meat is pretty slim. There's red sauce and good feet, also organic feet and meat croquet, but those are bottlenecked by milk and eggs. I need to warn you that cooking red meat dishes isn't always worthwhile. Especially at lower mastery, you may be better off just selling the red meat and cooking something else. In any case, making consistent money with market cooking comes down to combining it with gathering or hunting. To demonstrate how much money you can make, I'll show you three scenarios with different levels of gear and mastery. The first setup is with Logia gear and 1k gathering, 750 cooking and 850 hunting mastery. At this point the gear would cost you less than 3 bill. To make hamburgs you're looking at about 40 minutes of gathering lines for every 20 minutes of cooking. In an hour of doing that you could make 209 mil. If you spent the same time hunting verdure, bucks and other liter and cooking the meat into red sauce you'd be making 288 mil. One small side note for the red sauce, I matched the gather to cook time ratio with hamburgs for a fair comparison. In reality, you'd spend a lot more time cooking red sauce than hunting, so just imagine you'd cook the rest overnight. The next setup is gonna be more advanced with blue and manos gear and a fair bit more levels and mastery. With 20 to 25 billion gear, you could make 301 mil an hour with gather cooking hamburgs and 367 with hunting and cooking red sauce. And finally, the last setup with close to maxed out mastery and levels. At this point, you're looking at over hundreds of hours invested into life skills and close to 150 bill in gear. Gather cooking and hunting maxes out at 493 and 464 mil an hour at current prices. I want to note that this overview is not a blueprint for gear and level progression, but rather to give you a rough idea of how much money active life skilling can make when combined with cooking. To know exactly how much you could make doing this, you can calculate the income for your own setup. I'll show how to do that in the third video. Now we've talked a lot about gathering materials and cooking sub dishes like hamburgs and red sauce, but when does it become worthwhile to cook them into meals? In the current cooking market, you're gonna need a lot of mastery to make it worthwhile, somewhere beyond 1.4k. In practice, that means cooking with the lightstone set and mastery clothes. Now about the last question from the beginning. How much mastery do I need to make money with cooking? To answer this question, we just have to summarize what we saw in this video. Here you see my little map of the cooking market. The colors roughly indicate the mastery required to make these recipes worthwhile. 
Specifically, that means if you cook a dish that's way above your current mastery, you'll be losing money compared to other recipes that you could be cooking. For reference, I'd say you're at a medium mastery somewhere between 1k and 1.4k. I didn't put concrete numbers on this overview because the details will depend on your server and market conditions. And there are three major ways you can make money with cooking. The first one is cooking for byproducts. You want to cook cheap recipes like vinegar or essence of liquor and the money will come from byproducts. If you liquidate the byproducts as cheese or butter, you'll make anywhere from 30 to 100 ml an hour depending on your mastery and that mostly AFK. This method works with any mastery and a value pack is nice to have but not required. The second option is Imperials. You can simply buy dishes and box them for 45 to 120 ml profit per day in 5 minutes of work depending on your mastery. If you want to spend extra time collecting materials, you can cook the dishes yourself for extra money and cooking EXP. Pickled vegetables are the king of sub-guru imperials. Above guru, balanas, valencia and odalita meals are common choices. Then there's market cooking. At lower mastery, a great way to make money is gathering for bottleneck materials and cooking recipes like hamburgs, chef sandies and couscous. If you like hunting, you can hunt for red meat and cook it. But keep in mind that cooking the red meat is not automatically better than selling it and you're gonna need a bit of mastery to make cooking the meat worth your time. Once you reach higher mastery, it becomes profitable to cook the components you gathered or hunted for into meals. Using mastery clothes and the fundamentals of cooking Lightstone set is mandatory for cooking meals for the market. The recipes shown here are a selection of the most popular recipes. You can go out and find other recipes like this using Videolytics and the checklists at the bottom. As you can see, cooking for profit is a wild mix ranging from zero mastery requirement to absolute endgame mastery. The Lightstone update definitely played their part in shifting the money-making potential of cooking towards the higher mastery brackets. But no matter your mastery and how much active time you want to invest into life skilling, you should be able to pick something from that list to make money with cooking. This can be as easy as packing imperials while you're getting a coffee or AFK cooking while you're walking the doggo. And you can do that even if your main income is grinding. If you want to spend active time life skilling, gathering and hunting are super chill and great money makers when combined with cooking. And then you invest the money you earned into more gear and make even more money. And as you get to the higher mastery brackets, gather cooking and hunt cooking will become some of the best money makers in the game while being fairly low APM. Alright, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll see how to set up Videolytics and use our newly gained knowledge about the cooking market to compare the profit on different recipes and to maximize profits. Until then, bye.